Hello and welcome to the Daily Comic and Collectible, episode 372. Now today, the collectible of the day is the Hasbro Toys Marvel Legends Series Retro Kinner Collection Amazing Spider-Man Action Figure. High above the ground, swinging through the streets, Spider-Man stops criminals that seem impossible to beat. This three and three quarter inch amazing Spider-Man action figure is based directly off the classic comic book version of Spider-Man with his classic deco in blue and red. This figure has the classic retro five points of articulation, like a true old school figure, and comes on a retro designed blister card with the Kinner brand logo on the front. The back has an optional cutout art card of Spidey in action, a true Marvel Legends classic. Shout out to More Life and Travel for this retro piece, now added to my collection, released by Hasbro Toys. Now the comic of the day is Peter Parker, The Spectacular Spider-Man, Volume 1, Issue Number 48, with a cover date of November 1980, with story by Roger Stern, art by Mary Severin, and cover by Frank Miller. This issue is titled... Double defeat. Yesterday, a man was killed, and a witness saw the murderer crawl away along the side of a building and assumed it was Spider-Man, but it wasn't. The true assailant was a man called the Prowler. Spidey followed this new Prowler into a death trap, set up by Belladonna. Now, Spider-Man and the new Prowler are left to die in a room filling with gas by Belladonna. However, Spider-Man manages to bust free through the window. The Prowler is burned in the escape due to Belladonna's second trap she set and is turned over to the police. After a fruitless search for Belladonna, Spider-Man returns to his apartment where he's visited by Deborah Whitman and the two decide to go out for coffee. That is, after Peter stops parading around the room in front of Deborah in nothing but a towel. Meanwhile, in the hospital, the Prowler revives and recovers his equipment with the intentions of getting revenge on Belladonna. Peter, meanwhile, realizing there's a tie between Belladonna and fashion designer Desiree Von Pope, decides to go to pay her a visit as Spider-Man. He instead meets her sister, Narda, who's really Belladonna and tells Spider-Man that her sister has gone to visit Roderick Kingsley, who's in league with her. Going after Kingsley, Spider-Man is unaware that Narda is phoning Kingsley and tipping him off that Spider-Man is coming under Belladonna's order to eliminate him. Spider-Man, spying the paranoid Kingsley, is pacing around his apartment with a gun, sends down a web-filled dummy, when Kingsley shoots the spider dummy. Belladonna overhears it via a bug she planted in Kingsley's apartment. Belladonna is then visited by the Prowler, who plans on getting revenge. However, the arrival of an alive and well Spider-Man breaks things up, and he webs up Belladonna, Prowler, and the rest of her goons nice and snug for the authorities. Geek Fact after Spider-Man hands over the Prowler to the police, there's a heated argument between Spidey and the NYPD Sergeant Snyder. He wants Spidey to come down to the station to answer some questions and give a statement. Spidey declines. Spider-Man recounts his animosity with Lieutenant Keating and how District Attorney Blake Tower cleared him of all criminal charges in the deaths of George Stacy, his daughter Gwen, and the apparent demise of Norman Osborn. He was cleared of all charges in Amazing Spider-Man, Volume 1, Issue Number 186, with a cover date of November 1978. Bonus Geek Fact Peter accidentally burns a huge stuffed teddy bear in his apartment while trying to fix a lamp while talking to Deborah Whitman. He throws it in the trash on his way out. The man who recovers Peter's stuffed bear is writer Lynn Ween. This story was published around the time that Ween left Marvel Comics to work for DC, following a falling out with the management. 
Marvel Hostess Heroes! Mr. Fantastic is trying to get his hands on the malevolent alien Impercepto before he can steal the gold being exhibited at the Centennial Museum in this Marvel Hostess ad. Impercepto is invisible unless he comes into contact with gold. And according to Mr. Fantastic, superheroes can't afford real gold. But he's got something as good as gold. Hostess Twinkies. The golden bars of Hostess Twinkies reacted with Impercepto's DNA and Mr. Fantastic caught his man, er, alien. Even Impercepto can't resist the golden goodness and delicious sponge cake with light cream filling. They're fantastic! The Days of Saturday Morning Cartoons CBS Saturdays Check out this centerfold ad for Saturday Morning Cartoon lineup in 1980. It all starts at 8 a.m. with Mighty Mouse and Heckle and Jekyll, then the Tom and Jerry Comedy Show. At 9 a.m. is Bugs Bunny Roadrunner Show. At 10.30 is the all-new Popeye Hour. Then we have the Drac Pack at noon. Then the all-new Fat Albert Show. And we end our Saturday morning cartoons with the Tarzan and Lone Ranger Adventure Hour at 12.30. Starting September 6th on CBS Saturdays. Remember when Saturday mornings were for kids to control the remote? And final geek fact. Belladonna, real name Narda Ravana, owned a successful fashion design firm with her sister. But a rival, Roderick Kingsley, stole her designs and marketed them in the United States. Yes, that Kingsley, who would turn out to be the Hobgoblin in Amazing Spider-Man, Volume 1, Issue Number 238, from November of 1982, just two years after this story arc. Swearing vengeance, she became Belladonna. And with her henchmen, she tracked down Kingsley to Manhattan, where her goons assaulted him. But Spider-Man got involved, and Belladonna had to back down. Now, knowing about Belladonna, Spidey set up a trap to catch her before she could attack Kingsley again. The plan partially worked, but again, she escaped Spidey's grasp. After Spidey meddled in her affairs for a third time, Belladonna's revenge shifted to Spider-Man, and she hired the Prowler to kill Spidey. Belladonna is an expert in chemistry and employs a gas gun filled with neoatropine pellets that renders anyone exposed unconscious. She's also used the gas disguised in perfume bottles. Neoatropine is derived from the Belladonna plant. Well, I'd like to thank you for joining me for another Daily Comic and Collectible, and I hope to see you again tomorrow. This is Cat Fan Comics Man, and I'll catch you on the flip. Over and out. <laughs>